everyone. Welcome to my channel. My name is Kathy. If you are new here, thanks so much for stopping by. If we've painted together before, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. Today's technique video is on how to paint a butterfly. So let's take a look at what supplies we will need and we will get started. So today we have three colors that we're using. We are using fire coral, wicker white, and pure black. The brand of paint is Folk Art Multi-Surface Paint. This is not an endorsed or sponsored video. I just really always believe in sharing with you guys the paints that I use, the colors, the brushes, all that good stuff. Stuff that I've used for years and that I know works well with this technique. So uh, Folk Art Multi-Surface. I will also link or list in the description all of the supplies that we use so you'll always be able to go back and look at it later if you can't remember what color we did or what brush we used. It'll all be in the description in the video. Okay, so we have our three paints. We have two brushes we're going to use today. One is a number 12 flat brush, but you guys, whatever flat brush size you have at home will work for the technique we're doing today. But this is a number 12 flat, and this is a number one liner brush, okay? It's a little skinny brush there. These are both made by uh, Folk Art. I will also in the description put the website, it's onestroke.com, and that's where you're able to purchase these brushes. But truly, any brushes that you have at home today to practice with, you'll be good to go. So we have our paint, we have our brushes. I'm gonna scooch this over just so we have a little bit of room here. We have um, a styrofoam plate. This is our very fancy paint palette. I already have a couple puddles on here. Um, there's actually the black up there. So we're gonna talk here in just a minute about how to put the paint on the plate and, and the reason that we put it on in a certain way. So we'll get to that in just a sec, but this is just your average styrofoam plate. I have off of the distance here, you can kind of see it back here, um, brush basin that just has water in it. So if I need to rinse my brushes, that is there. I have paper towels also because I sometimes get a little messy. And then on the table, we have wax paper. I think it'll kind of show in the video here. But wax paper is the surface that we practice on. So whether you were painting with me at home via YouTube, which I appreciate, or if you um, are painting with me live and in person at one of my events, we will always have wax paper. We practice on every everything we do, we practice on the wax paper first before going to our good surface. So for example, if you came to an event and we were painting wine glasses, every technique we would do here first and then put it on the wine glass. Okay, so wax paper is a great, inexpensive, um, fun, nice, smooth surface to practice on. So that's what I recommend as you're watching this video and, you know, starting stopping and, and trying all these strokes. Just get a lot of wax paper, practice till you're comfortable before going to your good surface. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get started with building this butterfly. So let's get our paint on our palette first. So here we have our fire coral and our wicker white. And when you put the puddles on, you want to leave a space in between. Okay. And we're going to see why here in just a minute. But this is where we're going to do something called blending. We're going to make a blending spot. So one puddle, a little bit of space, another puddle. Okay. And we're going to come back and use this black. If you want to go ahead and get the black on the plate, you sure can. Otherwise, we can do that. Um, when we get to painting the body of the butterfly. But let's take a look. I have one, actually I have a couple here that I will show you as far as how the butterfly looks. This is a wine glass that has it on there. So when we're building this butterfly, we start with the top set of wings and then the bottom set of wings. And then we'll add the body with his little head and antennas there. So there's another shape here with this really pretty aqua color. This is just on a wine glass. So we're gonna practice these um, the wings first with a little bit of the, the bump stroke, and then we will add the body. Okay, so just to kind of give you an idea of what we're shooting for here. And we will look, I'll show you guys some projects when we're done too, just some inspiration of things you can do. So, all right, we are going to do something called double loading now, and that is just working two colors of paint up into one brush. And the neat thing about this method of painting is that you get color highlight shading all in one stroke. And that's, that's just the best part about loading both of these colors on at the same time. So let's talk about how we do that. So you're going to have your brush straight up and down. We are going to dip one corner in that peach color, that coral color, which I think is so pretty. And then we will dip the other corner of the brush into the white. Okay. And then on this plate, we are going to swoosh our brush back and forth. So we're going to start the coral by the coral, the white by the white. You're going to lay your brush down, pull it towards you and push away and pull it towards you and push away. 
and you can see now we have this funny little stripe here and in this stripe you'll have coral on one side white on the other and then in the middle is kind of a combination of the two so we're going to do this oh gosh probably three or four times dip each corner swoosh it back the whole point of this stripe is to get the paint up into the brush now one mistake i see when people are first starting is they'll tend to do this blending spot all over the plate they'll dip and move over here and here and here we don't want to do that every time you dip to pick up paint you want to go back in this same spot we don't want to paint the plate we just want to get the paint up into the brush okay so let's do that a few more times pull it towards you push away dip each corner i'm going to do it a couple more and we're just going to blend okay so i want you to see do you guys see how much is on my brush there you want this brush to be very goopy okay now every time we're gonna go we're gonna go practice some strokes now and every time you feel like you need to pick up more paint like you'll feel it you'll feel when your brush is running out of paint you will do the same thing you will come back and dip in each corner blend in the same spot keep painting when you need paint again same thing dip each corner um now it may happen it probably will happen the more you do this painting method you will come back and dip the wrong corner in the wrong color it will happen happens to everybody not a big deal at that point, if it happens and you go in the wrong puddle, just grab your paper towel, wipe this off, and just start over. Just reload and keep going. No worries. No matter how long I've been doing this, I still dip in the wrong color from time to time. So, All right, so we have a lot of paint on our brush here. I'm going to scooch my plate just off to the side, but I will be coming back to it to reload every time we need to. Okay. All right, so let's talk about this stroke. Here's a yellow one to show you just to give you a different perspective. Okay, so we're going to start with this outer bumpy area. We'll do the top wing and then the bottom half of the wing. Okay, so we are going to start with our brush straight up and down. The coral color will be furthest away from you on the top. The white will be closest to your body, so on the bottom. Okay, and let's just come and practice this it's just kind of a loopy or a bumpy stroke, I call it. So I'm going to start up here. We'll come back down here and build the butterfly. But let's practice up here just because I want you to kind of get a feel for how we swoosh the brush. Okay, so we're going to start straight up and down right on the edge. Now, the thing that I want you to do is kind of stay up on this edge. We don't want to lay this brush down like we've done in some of the other um, videos. If you watched um, any of the flower videos that I've posted we lay that brush down and really squish it. Well, with this one, we don't. We want to stay right up on the edge. And let me show you what I mean. We're going to start and we're going to do the right-hand side of the butterfly. So it's going to kind of come up to the right and pull back down. But we don't want to press real hard. We don't want this to be real poofy. So let's start right here. And we're going to start. And I'm just going to slide up and bring it right back down. I'm going to go up again and back down and up one more time and back down. So a couple things to look at here. We did not lift the brush off of the wax paper. We just went up, the brush stayed on there. We went up again and back down and then up again. So I never took the brush off of the wax paper. The white has always stayed in this corner. So we're kind of bringing that color around, but the white stays in the middle there. Okay, and I'm going to do this a few more times so you guys will get to see. And the best thing about watching this on YouTube, you guys, is you can pause this, practice, come back. You know, you don't have to do it all at one time. You can stop and start as many times as you need to. Okay, so this is the top of the right wing of the butterfly. So now this is the top wing. I want to do a lower wing. So I'm going to come and I'm going to start in the same spot. Like my brush is now going to be more horizontal rather than pointing up. My white is matching up in this corner, and I'm going to start the same way, but I'm going to come down a little bit lower and loop and loop. Okay, so we have three. You can even do three or four. There's, there's no right or wrong as far as numbers go, but you have the ones pointed up and then the ones that are angled more down. Okay, so let's practice. I'm going to show you the other side here. Okay, now this is a little harder because I'm angling towards you. So I'm going to try to get it to my brush so you can see what I'm doing. So let's come down just a little bit lower here. Okay, so I'm starting up on the edge. The coral color is on top. The white is closest to my body. This time I'm going to just lean a little bit towards the camera here. So it, it might be a funky angle, but we're going to do the same thing. Remember, we're not laying down all the way. We're not squishing our brush. We're staying right up on this edge. 
and we're just literally making loops, okay? So another good thing to practice if you want is just kind of do some zigzags and some loops. That kind of gives you a feel for being up on the edge of that brush. Okay, so I'm gonna start here. This time we're angled to about 10 o'clock. And this will make sense when we build the butterfly down here, so you'll see. And this one I was angled till about two o'clock. This one we're coming back and we're angled. If you think of a clock, that coral will be at 10 o'clock. Okay, so I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna swoosh up and pull down, up and down. We're just bouncing up and down. Okay, and again, you could do three or four or five. There's no, there's no right or wrong. But those are the three. We didn't lift that brush off. It stayed on that wax paper the entire time. We just did bumps. So up and down, up and down, up and down. Okay. We're going to now do those bottom part of the wing. I'm going to start right next to where we left off. Okay. That white is touching that corner of the white where we left off. This time, though, I'm going to be angled down. So we're going to come down and bounce up, down and bounce up. Now you can kind of get a real good feel here, just, just this with this practicing we're doing, of the benefits of doing double loading. Okay, you can see color highlight shading. See how we have the coral and the white and kind of a combination in between. That's all just from double loading that paint on the brush. Just the coolest thing. Okay, so I'm gonna come and I need some more paint. I can feel my paint's kind of starting to wear down. So I just came over, dip in the coral, dip in the white, swoosh back and forth. Just work in the paint. Remember, every time you come to pick up paint, you go over that same blending spot. Okay, so we're going to come here and let's start the butterfly and then we will give him his body too. Okay, so my butterfly is going to be kind of in this section here. So I'm going to start and I'm going to want one set of the wings to come up to the right, the other to come up to the left. Okay, and then we'll do some bottom wings too. So just kind of keep in mind, this guy is going to be kind of straight up and down from my angle here. Okay, so we are gonna start here. This brush, remember the top of the wing, color's on top, so the coral's on top, white's on the bottom, and this wing we're gonna start by angling out at two o'clock. So if you picture a clock, that brush is not at 12, it's gonna be angled at two, okay? So I'm gonna start here, and we're gonna do one loop, bounce back down, two loops, bounce back down, and three, okay? Brush never left the surface. All I did was up and down, up and down, up and down. I'm gonna grab a little bit of paint over on my plate. Okay, and now, so that's the top right of the butterfly. Now we're gonna do the two bottom wings. So I am gonna start in that same spot that we left off. Okay, that white is still touching that white in the corner. And I'm gonna come down and bounce up and down and bounce up. Okay, so this is a half of a butterfly. That's the right wing, the top, and the right wing, the bottom. All right, I'm gonna get some fresh paint over here. And you guys will definitely feel when you need to pick up more paint. Um, you know, it'll kind of start looking kind of muddy where you won't see your distinct colors. Um, it won't slide on the surface you're painting on. So you'll, you'll definitely feel when you need to come get more paint. And remember, each time you go over that same blending spot. Okay, so now let's assemble the left-hand side of the butterfly. So I am actually going to start in exactly the same spot. Oops, I got a little bit extra paint. That I started this one. So remember, we started here and went up and bounced down, and we were pointing at 2 o'clock. I am going to start with my white in the same corner, but this time I'm going to be pointing to 10 o'clock. Okay, so I'm going to touch the brush down. I am going to bounce up. 2, 3. Okay, that's the left-hand side. And then I will start in that same spot and I'm gonna come down and bounce up and bounce up, okay? So we started with the right, and it doesn't matter. You can start with the left side or the right side, does not matter. But you'll get the top part of the wing, the bottom, and then you'll come over and do the other side. Okay, so while that, we got the wings. So let's grab our little skinny liner brush and we are going to come back over to our plate and we are going to just pick up a little bit of our black paint because we want to do the butterfly body. So with this brush, oh, I got a little hair there. With this brush, it's very skinny. So we do things differently than we did 
sorry you guys I had to get that little hair off um that we did with the big brush okay but that one we swoosh back and forth here with this little brush it's almost like a pen or a pencil if you think of how narrow it is so you're going to bring it to your paint sort of dip it in and then sort of roll it and if you guys can see my fingers but we're just kind of rolling the brush between my fingers to kind of get that paint on there and keep that point see how that point is real narrow I hope you guys can see that it's real narrow this brush we actually kind of hold like a pen or a pencil it's okay to hold it kind of down towards the bottom um, this brush we use for all our fine details so in this case we're going to use it for his little body um, and his little antennas but um, any sort of fine detail eyes or writing or little scribbly details this skinny brush works great okay so let me grab this guy just so you can see how his body works so the body basically runs from the top of the wing to where the bottom meet. All, not all the way down, okay? So kind of from where the top of his wings join to where they join at the bottom. So just that little section. And then we'll do a little round circle and we'll give him some antennas. Okay, so let's practice that. All right. So what I want to do is I want to start and cover up this little part of where his wings meet. So I'm just going to start by drawing a line. Okay, and then I'm going to come and fill in a little bit on the left hand side and the right hand side. Now, my paint is still pretty goopy in the middle here because we just painted this and that's okay. We're just going to paint kind of right over it. Okay, we're just going to give him a little body. And then right on top of the body, we're going to do a circle. Okay. And then we're going to give him some antennas. You can come up from the head and curve over or bring it down onto the head. I tend to work better coming down. And I will hold this up here in just a minute so you guys can see it a little closer. But I'm going to start and I'm just going to draw a little up and over. A little up and over. That one got a little thinner than the other. So I'm just going to thicken it up a little bit. Okay. So again, we draw his body, circle for the head, and then the little antennas. Also, I think it's really kind of cute, too, if you just come and just add some little dots at the tips of the wings, just to kind of add just a little dimension there, a little highlight. Okay, and that's just with the very, very edge of this little brush. Okay, let me lift this up so you guys can kind of see a different angle, because I know it's kind of hard when we're painting to the side. Okay. So there's our little butterfly. I just love this coral color. I think he's so fun and springy. So very cute. Again, we did three petals up here, or three petals, three wings. It's like I'm doing a flower. Three swooshes for the wings. You could do four or five. You could really make that top part um, as full as you want if you want to add some more and then just a couple at the bottom. Okay, let me put this back down and I'll just show you a couple other examples, just some different colors. I think we, we looked at most of these already, but here is yellow. Now, with this one, the yellow was on the top of the brush, and if you look here, I flipped the brush, and now the white was on the outside as we did our bouncy. So that's just kind of a neat difference. Same colors, but then you can see how they, um, how the difference just on what color you have on the top of your brush. So it's kind of neat. And again, there's the little body and the little head and the antennas. This one is one of my favorites. Oh, this was painted on a blue bottle and with white. So... It was white and this bright true blue color, but the white was on the top. So the white was on the outside. Isn't that pretty on that blue glass? I just love blue glass anyway, but look how pretty that is. So the, the white was on the outside. Pretty neat. Okay. And I think that's it. I think the only other one I have, oh, I have a turquoise one, but same, same technique. So you guys, the coolest thing about this method of painting is that you can paint on anything, whether we're doing a canvas or a wine glass or a bottle like you saw or a piece of tin. The multi-surface paint that we're using will work on all of those. That's why it's my favorite because you can, no matter what you're painting on, you can use this paint. Plus you can do butterflies in all different sizes, all different colors. There's no wrong or right as far as how you do them. So just think of all the fun things you could do. Um, 
so many projects, so many fun things. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining me today. In the description, remember, I will link all the colors and supplies, everything that we use, so you have that there. If you liked this video, if you would consider hitting that like button, that would make that would mean a lot to me. Um, any comments that you want to throw in the comment section would be great. If you paint butterflies, take a picture and show me in the comments. I love seeing um, when you guys do things at home that we've painted together on YouTube, so... Um, please do that. That would be great. And if you have any comments or questions, suggestions, things you'd want to see in future videos, don't hesitate. Write that in the comments. I read all of them and I love it. So, and also um, there is a subscribe button. So if you would consider hitting that, that would be amazing. Um, that way you'll get notified when we upload new videos and when new things are coming. So thank you guys so much. I hope you have a great day and thanks so much for painting along with me. Bye-bye.